I'm Nikki Taylor, and over the past couple of years, I've used my own body to investigate the effects of binge drinking, plastic surgery, I've put myself under the knife, and I've even gone six weeks without washing. It's my way to really understand the effects, good and bad, of what we're doing to ourselves. And now with the cannabis debate raging, I'm going to pot. Like many others, I smoke cannabis at college. In fact, over 15 million of us have tried it, but few are fessing up. Do you guys do cannabis? No. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> a part, of course, from a select group of government ministers. And a third of all British teenagers. But do you know people that do? Yeah. 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 It's like a secret society. Everybody does it, but nobody talks about it. So is it more dangerous than alcohol? Is it stronger than it used to be? Will it drive us mad? Or to cope and to smack? I'm going to find out. Pro-cannabis campaigners think it's relatively harmless. They'd love it to be legalised. The government's worried about the risks and want to toughen up the law. It's confusing, and every day there's another scary headline. But what are the facts? I want to unpick the science from the fiction, get a proper understanding of what's going on. As a mum, I want to find out what could be in store for my children. One in seven kids under 13 have tried it. But is it still like the stuff I tried at college? And what effect would it have on me now? I'm going to smoke cannabis, on and off, for a month to find out. First, I'd better find out what's the worst that could happen to me. I'm off to see a doctor for a risk assessment. You know, I just thought this was an experiment I could do. I could just do each, maybe, strength of, of cannabis. So what have I got to look forward to? What are the effects of this? You've got the psychological effects and the physical effects. So the psychological effects are going to be Normally you get um, short-term memory loss where you can't remember things you've done that day, day before. You get reduced coordination and motor function, so you'll be, you may be falling down, you, you'll be a bit slower, you, you might get some paranoia. Long-term that can lead to schizophrenia, you might get depressed with it, it can cause, cause sleep disturbance and even nightmares. Physically it can affect the blood pressure, it can make the heart rate go up and if you're already feeling quite anxious that can cause chest pain. Is that all? If you've come for my advice, would be that um, I would not do it. Well, at least I know what to look out for. And I'm beginning to notice that cannabis culture is all around me. This head shop is one of about a hundred you can find on our high streets. Where better to start my journey than here? Excuse me, what's this for? What's that for? That's a rolling wallet, basically. A rolling wallet? It's got all your compartments in there. What do you put in here? Whatever you, whatever you choose to put in there. All right, OK. <laughs> put whatever I choose to put in there. All souvenir purposes. These are just souvenirs? <laughs> souvenir purposes. Do a lot of people come in here buying souvenirs? Yeah, we also we sell a lot of grow equipment as well. But not for growing? No, it's for tomato plants. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. And it really big tomatoes? Massive ones. <laughs> Do you have any seeds that you can sell of these plants? Yeah, we basically get you any seeds. Any, seed, yeah. any seeds uh -huh. you want. This, really is, this is just one of the And this is all legal? This is sensitive seeds. Yeah, there's nothing wrong, wrong with selling actual seeds, nothing with selling equipment, you just can't put them both together. So you can buy the seeds and you can buy the grow kit, but you're not supposed to use them together? Could I get away with a little experimental use myself? What does the law say about smoking cannabis? I asked a barrister, Richard Cross, to explain the law in this country to me. Is it illegal to smoke cannabis uh, in, in this country? Yes. Yes, it remains illegal under the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971. Uh, it can be punished with a custodial sentence uh, and uh, it is still prohibited. Even if it was just a small, a very small amount? As it stands, the law is unambiguous that possession of cannabis is unlawful. So obviously, it's not something that can be done in this country? Uh, no, uh, the only exception would be if it was a medical experiment under licence. So it's clear, in this country it is still illegal to smoke cannabis. 
But there is one place in Europe where I know for sure you can smoke a joint without getting arrested. Amsterdam. It's the ganja capital of the Western world. If there's anywhere I can try to understand the allure of cannabis and its risks, it's here. I just need to follow my nose to a coffee shop. And not because I'm in need of a quick cappuccino. There are over 900 coffee shops in Holland, and they don't just sell coffee. They're licensed to sell cannabis. This is the Dampering, one of the most popular ones here. Hi. Drugs? They've agreed to let me do occasional work here for a month, and off duty, I'll be able to smoke the cannabis. I'm introduced to Dennis, the deputy manager, and Bowie, the coffee shop cat. The Dampering's well known for stocking a wide range of cannabis varieties, some imported, but most of it locally grown. Babish Barker runs the shop. She's been buying and selling dope for the last four years. Uh, do you smoke regularly or...? Cigarettes? Uh, no, marijuana. No, no. OK. Amazing. So we have many different kinds. And you do marijuana, hashish? Hashies. Um, I think the best for you will be to start with Jamaica, which is an outdoor grass. It's grown outside. Yeah. It's not as strong as the others. It's uplifting, though. It makes you feel kind of tipsy. Yeah. And we have it free roll, so you don't have to make it yourself. Yeah, because I can't roll. No. That's why we make those. <laughs> so you've got a pre roll for yeah. Jamaican split? Yeah, it's mixed like with it. tobacco. You can just sit down, have a cup of coffee, read a paper, smoke your joint and uh, chill out. Just to make sure you really enjoy it, just nip it. Take two, three puffs first, yeah. then put it down for like seven to ten minutes and see what it does to you. And then if you don't feel enough, you can have another puff and if it's already fine, just leave it for a while. And uh, when it slips off, you can just smoke and light it up again. Okay. It's day one of my month-long experiment. The day I try my first spliff. Just in case, I have medical help on standby. So, this is it. I'm going to smoke a tenth of a gram of Jamaican weed mixed with tobacco. I'm not feeling anything. Look, I don't feel I'm getting any effects. I don't think nothing's happening to me. I hadn't realised that the cannabis hadn't had time to take effect, so I keep puffing. A little more relaxed. But a little funny, a bit sort of, uh, bits. a bit like motion sickness. But Babish had said take two puffs and then a break. I feel like... my body or my brain is just a second behind what I'm doing. Bowie has seen it all before. Ten minutes and 25 drags later, it hits me. This is really disturbing. It's worse than being blind drunk. Fucking hell. I'm really fucking scared. I just seem to work myself into a bit of a panic attack and I don't know why. Okay, well just, just try to think about nothing. nothing okay. Else. Just focus on the moment. It's a nice Sunday morning, the sun is shining. Yeah. I have to say, that was the worst day ever, ever, ever in my whole, whole life. Inside, I was absolutely petrified. At one point, I was too scared to even get out of the chair. It was like a massive, massive panic attack. I've got this stupid feeling that it's sort of um, unlocked some sort of paranoia in my head and forever I'm going to be paranoid. I just don't want to do it. I've taken far too much and, and what's stupid is now I'm really scared about doing anything else. Part of me is thinking, do I really want to do this at all? Sorry. Go away. 
now. One packet of cashew nuts, one chocolate. Black coffee. Wake me up. I really do feel wasted. But paranoia's gone. It's day two and my first day on the job at the dampering. Hi. Good morning. I'm still worrying about what happened yesterday. Yeah. How are you feeling today? Fine. My head's here, but yeah, I didn't feel great yesterday. I think you got too high. You know, that's because of the THC. I can show you how that works if yeah. you want, yeah? Yeah, yeah, show me. Now, if you look behind you, we have a picture of a, a, a THC crystal. And the top, the, the round shaped bit, that's the one that makes you really, really high. Really? Yes. And, and I had too much of that. that. You had definitely too much of that. First, a bit of bar work makes me feel more at home, but I'm greener than I thought. What would you do with it? Are you... I'll stick my right here. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit of a novice. No, no problem, you get it back, yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's the first day, you know. <laughs> Surprisingly, the locally grown varieties are the strongest. These are all the products, and the big ones is all the, uh, the grasses, the marijuana, and these are all the hashes in the little boxes like this. I'm feeling a bit like a sweet shop lady. Pick a mix, mix and match. But in this sweet shop, you have to be over 18. Oh, passport. Is this normal? Do they normally give you their passport? Yeah, oh, is it? To check their ID. Oh, yeah. because you've got such a young face. I like Grandma to check her, please. Jack Herra. Yeah. I know Jack Herra. Okay. Do I do. I do, I do, I do, I do. How much would you... A gram? A gram. Right. I can do this. Have you had a lovely day? A lovely day. I just uh, landed from Schiphol. Oh, really? You've just landed? Uh, are you Dutch? Do you, do you live here? No, I live in Leiden, but the shops are closed in Leiden till four, so I had to go to Amsterdam. Ah. Uh, what, what, your drug shops? Your coffee shops? Yeah. Ah. Uh, they're very clean hands. Do you like this stuff? Do you, ooh, it's just a bit. Do I like it? I yeah. love it. Do you? What's what's so good about Jack Herra? What's so? I, I don't know because I usually I smoke White Widow. Uh huh. But when I was young, I used to smoke Jack Herra, so it's a bit of. Oh, it's like going down memory lane. Yes, it's yeah. a bit like going down memory Trip lane. Trip down memory lane. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> Regular dope smokers say you can smoke and still carry on your normal life. I wonder if I can. I finished my shift now, so I'm going to try a tenth of a gram of pure hashish in a pipe. A smaller amount than yesterday. Will I feel any different? This time I'm feeling high in a different way. Chilled out and giggly. Are you feeling? Just, everything's really quite funny. I don't know, it just seems very funny. The holy grail for all potheads is Amsterdam's famous hemp museum. And stoned as I am, I'm off to interview Ken Johnson, the curator. Show me something else that's interesting. For this interview, I've got to try to be professional. But how long can I hold it together? Wow, do you actually grow your own? Well, it's strictly for demonstration. Now this can actually leave the premises, so it doesn't go to the coffee shops. It's mostly destroyed on site. Destroyed on Well, smoking destroys it. The hashish is kicking in now, and Ken's getting really technical on me. Out of the presence of males for the whole cycle, then it, the, the bud, as we call it, swells and gets more covered with THC, which is the active ingredient. Wouldn't it be funny if you could manufacture your own THC? You wouldn't need to grow the plants, would you? Well, your body manufactures its own uh, cannabinoids. Funnily enough, which is why it takes an effect on us. We have a, a neurotransmitter that is so chemically similar to cannabinoids that it's classed as a cannabinoid, even though it's manufactured by your own body. So we've got a ca canna cannabinoid. Cannabinoid. Yes. Cannabinoid. It's called. Uh, uh, cannabinoid. What is it called? It's cannabinoid. Uh, THC? Cannabinoids? Ken thinks it's riveting, but I'm losing interest fast. Uh, I forget the oh, don't worry about the big words. And I'm finding it really hard to take in anything he says. Okay. This is a vaporizer, for instance. This Funnily enough, my attention started wandering, What's and a this? pile of guinea pig bedding suddenly seems so inviting. Of course, oh. uh, 
oh. the most useful thing about cannabis is really its fiber. Oh, aren't they sweet? <laughs> amazing amount of things. It used to run pretty much half the world up until about the 19th century. Most, nearly all ships sailed on it, half the... You have had a smoke today, I can tell. <gasps> oh no! What's wrong? I am going to have to be excused. <laughs> I'm not the first Brit to come and chill out in Amsterdam. There are over one million British tourists a year, thousands of whom can't get enough of this liberal utopia. It's a better quality of smoky, so, and that's it. You know, that's why we come to Amsterdam, just to let go. If it were legalised in England, it'd be, it'd be more chilled out over there than like it is here. Amsterdam's not what it's all about, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's got everything, everything you want. It's the the Although cannabis is more available to the Dutch, as a nation, they smoke less of it than we do. People think it's legal here, but is that true? Where in the world is cannabis legal? I think in Tanzania it's legal. Jamaica? Amsterdam's the only place I know. Um, is that, yeah, Amsterdam, yeah. The answer is nowhere. Amsterdam may be the most tolerant city in the world, but it's still illegal to possess the drug. The big difference is the unique way in which the Dutch authorities apply the law. If this policeman, Rob Deneef, was English, he'd probably have to arrest these drug dealers, but he's not. So tell me, how do you deal with cannabis in Amsterdam? Uh, we tolerate it. Huh? Uh, when the tourists are coming to Amsterdam, we tolerate that they use drugs in the coffee shops or in the hotel, but not on the street. By allowing a little bit of flexibility, it's making it safer, do you think? When it is uh, not allowed to do it, uh, then you see that the dealers are coming on the street, they buy it on the street, they go to the hotel, they go to the stations. Uh, so we don't have uh, uh, any view on it. In the coffee shop we know who the owner is, we know the quality, uh, like that sort of things. There's, there is no uh, danger for the tourists to use here. In Holland there are just two classes of drug, soft and hard. The Dutch believe that by treating the two classes of drug really differently, soft drug users are less likely to come into contact with hard drug users. Their heroin problem has not increased in 20 years. But back at home, our heroin problem has gone up a thousand percent since the 1970s. Here in the UK, the laws on classifying cannabis have changed recently, but nobody seems to know quite how. Do you know what class drug cannabis is? Is it A? A, B, C, and it's gone up to a B. Yeah. Easier. Is it A? Is it A? No, it's not. No idea. It's legal, though, isn't it? I thought that if you had a small amount that was for personal use, you weren't arrested. Can you go to prison for it? No. Can you go to prison for cannabis? No. Yes, you can go. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Warning. It's just not as easy as one, two, three. So what is the law? When it was a B drug, dealing cannabis would have got you 14 years behind bars and possession up to five. Now it's a C drug, you still get 14 years for dealing, but only two years for possession. Downgrading cannabis from class B to class C was intended to free up the police and courts for more serious crimes, but has that happened? Dame Ruth Runciman chaired an inquiry into the misuse of drugs for the police foundation. In reclassifying cannabis, most people don't understand this, the government made changes to the Police and Criminal Evidence Act that retained arrestability for all Class C drugs. There are those who think that the differences now between Class B and Class C are so small as to not warrant those two classes. I'm out with the Peterborough Police, and whilst they have a tough policy on alcohol, I'm curious to know whether they have relaxed their attitude towards cannabis since its reclassification. A recent UNICEF report said that the UK had the third highest rate of teens smoking dope in the developed world. In Peterborough, they have new community methods to get closer to the kids on the streets. 
Why, why are you offering sweets yeah. to them? Um, psychologically, it makes them change their mentality from an aggressive adult to a compliant young person. Whilst I had the opportunity, I thought I'd ask the kids if they had any experience of cannabis. Can I, uh, can I ask them a question? Yes, you can. Come on in the video, man. We're just finding out whether young people know about how the law has changed towards cannabis. Do you know, do you know if it's changed or not? Cannabis? Yeah. Yes. It's all about um, Wacky Bucky. Yeah. Wacky Bucky. Do you know anything about Wacky Bucky? Um, yeah. I know a little bit. What you do? Know? I know a little bit. Have you, have you tried you it before? Yeah. 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 Kane is 15 and told me he started smoking when he was 13. When I first started smoking it, like, I didn't really like it. Makes you trip it. Because my mates, once I got used to it, carried on smoking it every day. And that was it, really. So I suppose I got addicted to it, like fags. It's like, there's no mental addiction, you don't get pains and that, but you feel that you need it, sort of thing. And what does it do to you? Chills me up, makes me concentrate a lot more as well. Does so it? I find it hard to concentrate at school and that. Seriously, you smoke it before school? Yeah. What, every day? Yeah. <laughs> no. You need it to go to sleep and everything. I find it like an addiction, isn't it? What about your mum and dad? What do they say? Yeah, my mum's all right. It. She'd rather me do that than go out with my mates and that cause trouble, isn't it? So what do the police do if they catch kids smoking dope? Previously, it used to be a, an arrestable offence. Straight away, we'd arrest them. Uh, now we issue a final warning for use of cannabis. Um, I believe it's three strikes and it is an arrest. Kane lives part-time with his granddad. Is he worried that cannabis may lead Kane onto harder drugs? It concerns me that um, it could lead to something else, something stronger. And once they get onto something stronger, they're hooked. Do you think that's a possibility with Kane? It's always a possibility. It's a worry, and it's all right, Kane saying, "Yeah, I'm in control," but I don't think you're ever in control. So you tried, you tried a few other little things. Yeah. But you didn't like them. Mm -hmm. Did, but thought now it's not a thing to be taken every day, isn't it? So it's just well, I've not taken. You know what I mean, I just stick to my weed. But you wouldn't be tempted. Oh, I'm going to go and try something harder. No. no. Why is that? Have you seen the effects of what yeah. hard stuff does? Yeah. And what does it do? It's nasty, like heroin and that shit, isn't it? It's not I've even worth taking. I've never seen what I've never seen anybody. Wake up like hot and cold sweats, can can't stop moving and that and it. Just dying basically, more or less killing yourself, that sort of drug. Don't do nothing good for anyone, it just tears all their families away and whatever, innit? It's nasty. Though Kane's granddad is understandably concerned, according to the Home Office, the great majority of cannabis users don't always move on to harder drugs. Although for those who do, it's bad news. Back in Amsterdam, it's time to get back to my experiment. At the beginning, the doctor warned me that cannabis could affect my concentration. I want to put it to the test. I'm going to perform a simple task, to put together a flat pack cabinet. I've got two of them, different models but similar. One I'll assemble sober, the second stoned on cannabis. Sober, my ability to follow instructions is fine. I'm on the ball. I know what I'm doing. It's just that I'm not very good at it. Next, I'm going to smoke a tenth of a gram of cannabis with tobacco, remembering to take only two drags. Ten minutes later, and I'm faced with a second flat pack cabinet. I don't know where to start. I've got to click something on this and I can't make a decision. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, I only took two puffs. You become uh, uh, detached and, and also uh, not interested in, in, in things uh, anymore, indifferent in a way. I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> Seriously, it's really impossible. I just. I really want to go over there. Put my head down. Immediate effects of cannabis are dry lips, dry mouth, uh, droopy eyelids. Uh, people are gazing in a way. 
I mean, you, you just feel so completely spaced out. There's no way I could do anything. It feels like being sort of shot to oblivion. I don't know where I'd fit oblivion in in my life. While my brain may be shrinking, my waistline certainly isn't. I'm so hungry. Apparently cannabis triggers a chemical surge in the brain, which stimulates the appetite. There's also evidence that cannabis lowers blood sugar, oh, hence the craving for sweet things. Oh, no, 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 a custard one, this one. Oh, you know, I fight the calories so much and then in the space of a bloody afternoon, I demolish a whole cake, two packets of crisps, those funny little cheesy biscuits that I never normally eat. More or less a whole packet of Doritos. And I'm even hungry now. I'm back in the UK for a bit of a break from drug taking and I've begun to notice a pressure on my breathing. I know I smoke cigarettes, but I've never felt like this before. Headlines have suggested that cannabis is more dangerous than tobacco, so I'm off to see a top lung specialist, Dr. Con, who spent the last eight years researching the effects of cannabis on the lungs. Is pure cannabis worse than nicotine? Well, they've done the studies looking at pure cannabis smokers, and one joint may be equivalent to three normal tobacco cigarettes in terms of the airway damage. So we can show you that pure cannabis smokers who don't mix their joints have lung damage. This is someone who's 22 and they're a cannabis smoker. They, they in fact stop now, but basically their lungs collapsed down. They were in St. Mary's fairly recently. And the reason that lung has collapsed down is because they've got holes in their lungs. And this is a normal set of lungs on a CT scan. This is the ex-cannabis smoker skin. Can you see these little holes here? And do you think that, that that's down to the cannabis? Well, it's very hard to imagine anything else causing it. This type of change we would expect to see when you're a bit older, so 40 plus 50, 60. But we're seeing it, this is a 22-year-old. So if I stopped, you know, stopped the smoking, the, the, the holes would, would heal up and, and I'd be okay? I'm afraid not. Those holes cannot be repaired. They are permanently with you. The lung is not a good organ in terms of repair. It's the same with tobacco. If you damage it and cause holes, those holes will are permanent. God. So whilst I knowingly inhale a burning substance, a cigarette in this case, I risk the possibility of premature ageing, an increased risk of dying from lung cancer, and a 50% chance of being killed by the habit. If I smoke cannabis, the jury is out, but the odds could be higher. But the plant cannabis has been used medicinally for over 4,000 years. The Chinese used it for unblocking bowels, Buddha ate it for enjoyment, and Queen Victoria used it for PMT. More recently, it's been used as pain relief for people with AIDS, Parkinson's and MS. But if it's not prescribed, it's still illegal. A Northumberland grandmother who refuses to give up using cannabis as pain relief is to be given one last chance to avoid eviction from her home. Pat Tabram has been self-medicating with cannabis for the last three years. Today she's going to court for growing and smoking cannabis in her home. Hello. 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 Sorry, did I wake you up? <laughs> well, I was just got a <laughs> Big day, hey, big day. It is. I had phone calls from quarter past four last night till half past ten from well-wishers all over the country. Some of them are travelling from Aberdeen, some are travelling from Weymouth, just to go to the court for two o'clock this afternoon. No. Honestly. Do you ever have police coming around and raiding your house looking for your drugs? Oh, yes. Do they? Come with yes. sniffer dogs? They go with... No, they've never brought sniffer dogs, because if they come in here and say, where's your green, I usually tell them. But I, I did hide it somewhere, and I can't remember where I put it. That's a bit of a problem. Hide it and then... <laughs> I, I do forget where you put it. I do it all. You don't, would, you, would you put it in cupboards? It um, behind something. Behind, behind the washing machine? No. Can doctors prescribe it or not? Or is that actually, it's completely forbidden? Well, there are medicines available with cannabis in. There's about three. Yeah. yeah. But who wants anything with chemicals in? 
No. It's been interfered with. It's been created by a pharmaceutical company, and so it will have a string of side effects. Yeah. I worked it out about two, three years ago that uh, to get the most amount of pain relief, I had to try and get uh, it into perspective. Was it easier to smoke it or easier to cook it? How do you... Is it soup or tea? Or about three weeks ago, I started experimenting with chocolate. Can I have a look? Yes. Oh, that one makes them gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Each one has 0.1 of a gram inside of it. That is how much you need five times a day to be pain-free 24 hours a day and to sleep. And there's no grain in it. There's nothing in it. Just Do you sell these? No, no. Oh, you're I not sell them to anybody. No, you wouldn't. I I've never had them. You'd be a dealer then, wouldn't you? Yeah. Would you? I mean, would you give me one? Uh, no, I wouldn't give you one. But uh, when I go and get my hot water. If you want to try one, that's your business. Would I would so give I, you one? So if I, you wouldn't give me one. If you stole one, you could keep it. I don't want stolen property in my house. Can you excuse me yes. till I go to the loo and I'll, I'll come back and get my okay. hot water. Pat escaped eviction this time, but was given a warning that if she's caught dealing or growing again, she will lose her home. She can only see the good in cannabis, but it is a drug just like alcohol, and under the influence it can do you harm, and even worse, do other people harm. Back here in Amsterdam, I want to find out which is worse, cannabis or alcohol, when it comes to harming others. Where better to find out than behind the wheel? Yeah, nice. Rob Schmidt Definitely. is a driving instructor. We're going to perform an experiment to see what's more risky to me and other road users, being drunk or stoned. For the test, I'm going to get up to 70 kilometers per hour and then drive 400 meters at a row of baby dolls in the road. When the lights are illuminated, I have to swerve to miss them. First as a control, I'm doing it sober. My last minute reactions aren't too bad. That was great. When Nikki was sober, she got to the right speed, she braked on time, steered to the left on time, and there are no babies killed in this experiment. Next, the same thing, but this time after two large drags on a pipe containing half a gram of cannabis. I'm clearly under the influence. My aim, as before, is to reach 70 kilometers an hour to assess how quick my reactions will be. I just want this nightmare to end. Well, then we have to speed up a little. But I just can't do it. In my head, I feel I'm going really fast, about, uh, that I'm nearly out of control. The reality is different. Ooh. My judgment is terrible. Good breaking. After the cannabis, she's much more cautious. She's frightened. Her sense of risk doesn't measure up to the real risk. She's a danger to herself and um, uh, those uh, on the road. Next day, I come back for part three. And I'm going to drink a bottle of wine to take me three times over the legal limit. Oh, I think I am just beginning to feel the kind of wave of the grape. It has numbed my brain, but in a completely different way to cannabis. Before, the cannabis unlocked fear. Now I feel fearless. Okay, you're a very handsome man. <laughs> Ooh. How naughty. <laughs> <laughs> You braked okay. Nikki, the baby's head is falling off. After booze, Nikki feels like Superwoman. She thinks she's in control, but sadly she isn't. That makes her, or anyone, a really dangerous driver. According to a British Medical Journal report, the risk of being involved in a serious accident is six times greater when drunk and twice as great on cannabis. But both drugs seriously impair your judgment. 
Turns out that lots of people drive stoned, but one joint, even a mild one, could cause you to have a serious accident. Get you a £5,000 fine, six months in prison and a minimum disqualification of a year. It's not just about driving, it's also about how out of it you can get. I find it scary feeling out of control. The thing is, as a drinker I know my limits with my wine, beer and spirits. But with cannabis, I've no idea, no clue what effect it's going to have. But back in the cafe, Babiche thinks there are parallels. I usually compare them with alcohol because you have like wine or tequila or whiskies. Because that way you can sort of explain a little easier what the effect is. Because oh, it does yeah. vary a lot. Does it? Yeah, it does. So it is a bit like, so in a way you're almost like a, like a, a cannabis connoisseur, like a, a wine, it's a bit like being a wine it's connoisseur. It's like, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And you can tell the difference between the different varieties. Of yeah. Yeah, you can give a very good uh, sort of like headline of what the effect is going to be like. So those ones over there look like, for instance, super silver. What's super that? silver. Have you red wine? Really? Yes. We uh, like the Ocean 12. That's more like a good cognac, I always say. It's clear, but it's, it's pretty strong. You're very chill, but you're not sleeping. And if you have more like a whiskey, which is like the Marco Hayes, that's a little heavier. So you're still there, but you're not really moving around anymore. <laughs> and we have one thing, it's called Isolator, and that's really the strongest of the strongest. And that's only crystals pressed together, and that is like a THC level of almost 50-60%, which is really, really high. And that is definitely comparable with a half a bottle of tequila or something. Is it rubbish? Or is what she says true? In a blind test, I'm going to smoke two joints, both containing the same amount of cannabis, but one supposedly super strength and the other very mild. Will I be able to tell them apart? I've no idea which one's coming first. I think uh, what I'm going to go for is a, a mild hash tonight. The first one is the King Hassan. It's a very nice one. Nice, mild, uplifting, a bit like a glass of wine, kind of. So I think this is a good one to start with. So just... To... I feel like my lips are sticking... Oh, do my lips look as if they're sticking together? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit dry. My, the whole of the inside of my mouth feels like no. it's so dry. On this one, I feel lightheaded, tipsy, like having two glasses of wine. My reaction time is not too bad. <laughs> they did it again. I just flex my shoulders and you flinch. Okay, now um, this is the, the Malika hash. This is the strongest of the hash that we have. Um, yesterday she got a, a milder version, but she doesn't know that yet. And this is really the strongest. So, um, but it's a happy one though. It's an uplifting one, but really, really strong. <laughs> Who's gonna carry her home? I'm not gonna carry you. <laughs> oh look, she's sitting there, yeah, waiting. She looks nervous. All right, that's it. Let's go and see what she thinks, huh? I've made you a new one. Great. It is the same amount, exactly the same amount of cannabis. It's, uh, as same as amount of hash, yes, hash. but different kinds. Right, okay. Well, nothing for the moment, no. but we do have to wait, don't we? we have to yeah, wait no, through. definitely. Just, uh, well, not wait, wait, just let it happen. Okay, I'll get you a coffee. Okay. I really feel different from yesterday. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what did you put in that thing? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this time, oh no, my muscles feel very heavy. My mind is like treacle.
and there's a delay. I feel blind drunk and out of control. The second spliff is definitely much stronger. It may not be totally accurate, but at least their menu is a guide to what you're getting. Bye. My month in Amsterdam is over, and it's time to leave. I'm a whole lot wiser, but I am still puzzled why my experience under the influence of cannabis has been so varied, from freaked out to chilled out. I'm back home, and cannabis is in the headlines. Have I been putting myself at more risk than I thought? Reports suggest one spliff can cause madness. Back in the 30s, they were saying the same thing. Is it all scaremongering, or can cannabis make you mad? How strong is the evidence that cannabis contributes to psychosis? Professor Robin Murray is at the forefront of British research into the matter at the Institute of Psychiatry. Hi. Hello, Professor. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hi. I have to say, I'm quite scared about the headlines I've been reading. There's one that said, psycho risk, one joint. What do you think about these, these scary headlines? I think probably the risk of what, taking one joint and going psychotic is the equivalent of taking one <coughs> drink of wine and becoming alcoholic. So it's negligible. Uh, it's ridiculous. Cannabis taken regularly, several joints a day over a period of years, will in fact increase one's risk up to, to doubling it. Some people have a greater liability to going psychotic on cannabis, whereas other people seem to be able to smoke without really coming to any great uh, harm at all. People vary in their uh, li genetic liability, and then there are the, the environment, the social factors, whether they have a really difficult life, uh, these sort of factors also contribute, but cannabis may add to these factors and tip them over the edge into psychosis. So though long-term use of cannabis could trigger psychosis, the more lurid headlines are wrong. But what about all those newspaper claims that cannabis on our street has become much stronger? Is that true or not? I'm going to a forensic lab where drugs seized in police raids end up. Dr Phil Yates is a forensic drug scientist and is an expert on the cannabis sold on Britain's streets. This is where our items are kept when we first receive them from the police. Mm -hmm. All sorts of drugs in there, it's not just cannabis, all sorts. Exactly, right. everything that we receive, whatever drug type it is. A little cannabis plant is there. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and here we have an example of some flowering tops, which you can have a look down the microscope if you like. They're like little kind of beads. Yes, that's right. And those are what is known as the resin glands. And if you look at it under a higher powered microscope, yeah. that's what they actually look like. They kind of look a bit like mushrooms, where you've got a, a <laughs> yeah. stalk with a little sort of dumpy donut shaped thing on the top. Yeah. Uh, and they contain the drug. What I really want to know, though, is, is it stronger than it used to be? Well, the short answer to that question is yes. The majority of the cannabis that we see in the UK these days is the homegrown, genetically yeah. altered type, which can contain 10 to 15 percent THC, typically. If you compare that to the naturally grown cannabis that would be imported from abroad, that would typically contain 3 to 5 percent THC. So in comparison, it's three to four times stronger. A worrying trend that we have seen in the last year or so in the UK is cannabis tops, which have been adulterated with tiny glass beads. And if you imagine you're inhaling tiny red-hot beads into your lungs, I'm sure it can't do you any good. With cannabis production in the hands of criminals, it's no surprise they happily add glass balls to make their dope look stronger. So whilst 15 million people may enjoy cannabis, do they really know what they're getting? Three cannabis farms are raided every day in Britain. Skunk, which is cannabis grown specifically for its high THC, is on the rise. There's now so much grown here that for the first time, Britain is exporting the drug. Out on the street, people also think it's getting stronger and that it can cause problems. Skunk is a very powerful drug. Do you want me to tell you all the things that it does to me, seriously? Yeah, tell me. Like, I'm in my house, like, I hear a helicopter, 
looking out the window, like it does all madness. It's to me, it makes me paranoid. 24 7. Sometimes I can just be normal, like smoking, I'm very happy. And then after, my mum, she might say something like, oh, rich. Like, and then I'll just, whoa, whoa. Like, that's all the things it does to you, seriously. So don't just think, mean, if, you're, if you're 13 or younger, stay away from it till you're like 21 or something, till you know what it actually, because all the 13-year-old kids like on, on the streets these days are walking around, big ones like, they don't know what it's doing to their brain, seriously, take it from someone with very lot of experience. It's stronger than before it used to be, because it's got too much chemicals out of here and it fucks up your head, you lose memory in your head. But are these views right? Is it really true that the skunk out there can play havoc with your mind? Here at the Institute of Psychiatry, I've agreed to take part in a unique medical trial designed to find out. It's part of their ongoing research into the link between stronger cannabis and psychosis. The scientists are interested in the effects of the ratio between the two main components of cannabis, THC and cannabinoid. So on one day, I'm being injected with pure THC, something like ultra-high potency skunk. On the other day, I get a mixture of THC and cannabinoid, more like the natural makeup of the cannabis plant. When I get the injections, I don't know what I'm getting. It turns out that this one is a mixture of THC and cannabinoid. After 10 minutes, it hits me. <laughs> With the THC and cannabinoid, no matter how hard I try to take the experiment seriously, it all seems hilarious. <laughs> oh, I'm getting something. I'm getting something a bit softer than that. <laughs> What does it feel like? It looks very enjoyable. My God, it's fun! It was amazing. Amazing. With the pure THC, it's a different story. It's horrible. It's like being at a funeral. It's sort of like, um, it's just so depressing. You'd want to, um, top yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of morbid. After 15 minutes, I begin a series of psychological tests designed to measure whether I've become psychotic, and if so, how severely. I feel agitated. No. On the THC and cannabinoid mixture, I seem really flippant. On this drug, I just don't care. I'm experiencing profound insights. Bollocks. I'm worried the state of mind won't end. I don't want it to end. This experience is frightening. Strong. I feel agitated. Yeah. I do. I do. But with the pure THC, I'm suspicious. Introverted, weird. Every question seems to have a double meaning. Trouble is, my attention's like really massively into just a word or something. It's like, but not in a happy, it's like in a morbid, morbid is, that's how I feel, morbid. It's, it's an anxiety, it's like, an, it's like a panic attack, do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you ask me a question, I'm thinking, I don't know the answer. I'm just one of many volunteers taking part in this trial. The doctors are hoping to answer some of the really important questions about cannabis and psychosis. For example, do people react differently to exactly the same dose of THC? And can cannabinoid reduce the psychotic effect of THC? It certainly made me uncontrollably giggly. Two hours later, the effects have worn off. So just how psychotic did I get? The psychiatrist used a standard test which measures changes in psychotic symptoms. And on the first day you scored one for your change from baseline to the peak experience. 
was one, which is insignificant. Above four is thought to be clinically significant. Above four would be what you might expect in schizophrenic psychosis. And you scored 14 on the second day. So you were really quite persecuted and really uh, f it felt quite unpleasant. Um, I scored 14. Um, an increase of 14 points on pure THC was very high and suggests that the new breeds of skunk can play havoc with your mind. But with no history of mental illness and no predisposition to schizophrenia, I was at no long-term risk. The real worry is for heavy users of skunk. One person with first-hand experience is J-Rock, lead rapper of the hip-hop band Big Brothers. He decided to go public about his negative experience on weed. Over time, I would say, it became like I was super paranoid constantly. And with the fame, it made things even worse because, you know, when people would come up to me and ask me for an autograph, I think there was something else, you know, a trick up their sleeve or something. They wanted to rob me or fight me or whatever the situation. So, you know, I, I didn't feel comfortable in myself anymore, you know, so I decided to stop smoking, yeah. And I'm not saying it's anything like crack cocaine or, you know, it's, it's not a, a, a hard drug. But over time and, and through excess, it's really dulling your brain cells. It's really limiting your advancement. The research at the Institute of Psychiatry is beginning to unravel the way cannabis really works on the mind. And what's become clear to me over this whole journey is that there are a whole range of different varieties and different strengths of cannabis out there. And they can have wildly different effects. You have the pro-cannabis lobby who say cannabis is a sacred boon to mankind. It has no adverse effects. It's hardly even a drug. It's something that will enhance your, your, your life. And then they, you have the protagonist or the prohibitionists who think it's the, it's the devil's uh, construction, <laughs> cannabis, uh, that as you say, one puff and you go mad. I mean, e e each of these are equally ridiculous, and I think that has been the difficulty that somehow or other there's beca been an ideological dispute and relatively little research. There's no doubt that cannabis, like alcohol, is a potent drug. And whatever the outcome of the debate about the toughening up of the anti-cannabis laws, millions of people are still going to use it. The scary thing is that, unlike Amsterdam, many people here just don't know what they're buying and the risks they're taking. So, I've come to my conclusion. Street skunk is definitely off my menu. And I'm back to my drug of choice. Comedy Williams and Lucas style next on BBC Three in Little Britain.